Amen. Good morning, Christ Community Church. So glad you're here with us this morning. Um, Pastor, I'm Pastor Mitch and my wife, Rebe. We're founding pastors of the church. Sometimes I have to introduce myself. But uh, we're so glad you're here. Some people are viewing us by live stream and we welcome them. We've got so many things going on. I just don't know if I can keep up with everything. But while I'm trying to put it in order, it's just a big thank you to all of our volunteers that came for the uh, State College, Christmas and State College event we had Wednesday night. I don't know if you called that, about seven, between seven and 800 people. I was part of the parking detail, and uh, we filled up the parking lot. We filled up all the grass uh, par spaces, just about 40 or 50 cars in the grass. We filled up HFL Good Co. parking lot over there. It was just people were everywhere. Bodies were everywhere. It was just an incredible event. And uh, all I can tell you is I feel like our community is hungry for quality events. And uh, you guys did it. So give yourselves a big hand. You did a tremendous job. Good job, good job, everybody. All right, having jumped in, we're we'll talking this morning about Jesus' revelation. And we've been discussing all the different features of Jesus. And a lot of times at Christmas, we, we sometimes, I know I do, get stuck in a rut. And we look at Jesus as being a certain type of uh, person. A lot, a lot of times we think of Jesus being still in the manger, in the, uh, in the, in the baby state. And uh, we're discovering that Jesus is more than just a baby that he's risen from the dead, that he grew up, became a man. Uh, what the Bible says he went to the cross for you and I, that he died, and he rose again. So that gives us great hope that even as we sit here in this gymnasium, that Jesus is with us, that Jesus Christ we're talking about from 2,000 years ago is not a philosophy. He's not just a religion. He's a person. And uh, we had a word come forth earlier, first service, or before first service, our one of our guys, Bud Yost, was telling me, he says, I feel like the Lord put this on my heart, and I want to share this with you all because I want you to hear this. He says, I feel like there's people who are going to be coming to church maybe for the first, get this, maybe for the first time in their life. They're going to be coming to service, and they're looking for hope because they've tried everything else, and they can't find any hope. And my prayer is that we as a community of faith would be able to provide the living hope that Jesus brings that uh, maybe they've tried dead ends and all the different things that we know that are going on in our culture and that they'll find out that Jesus is more than just a, a figure in a manger, that he's more than just a religion, that he's a person. And it's that personal relationship with Jesus Christ that is the reason for the season. Amen? So I'm talking about Jesus being revelation. Let me just, a lot of people don't understand the word revelation. It means to uncover, to unveil, uh, make, to make manifest. And uh, Jesus wants to reveal himself to us. And a lot of times people get confused about when they think about Jesus and Revelation because they want to they uh, isolate Jesus just to church purposes and put him in a box. And let me just tell you a quick story because I thought this was a great story. There was a famous African-American scientist named uh, George Washington Carver. He had this idea that God would use him in the field of science. And so he was a religious man, very, very uh, pious. He would pray, see God. And he was, one day he was praying, he said, God, show me the secrets of the universe. And uh, the Lord spoke to him and said, no, it's way too big for you, George. Your brain can't handle it. So he kept praying and seeking God, and finally God said to him, he's saying, God, he says, please just, I'll just, give me a field to go in. Show me what I can operate on, what I can learn. What, we'll just, I will just, God, I'll just follow you. And so growing up in Georgia, he knew what God said. And God just spoke to him and said, George, if you will stick close with me, I'm going to show you the secrets of the peanut. And all I can tell you is that he came up with 300 different uses of that little thing called the peanut. And I am so thankful because I love peanut butter. I'm just so thankful that we had a man of God that sought God and had a revelation of how you could take a little thing called the peanut and use it in all the various ways that he's used it for. I'm just saying, just an amazing thing. So when you, talk, when you think about Jesus' revelation, you have to think of it as like if you're in business, if you're in the marketplace, if you've you got a family, wife, or a husband, or kids, or you're looking at making money, or you're looking at health issues, or you've got all these other things, I'm telling you, you need the spirit of revelation. You need the spirit of Jesus to reveal to you the direction you need to go in. 
For a lot of us, we need Jesus to come and speak to us just on our daily life, just things that he wants us to do, things he wants to accomplish through us. Pastor Dina found this verse, and I'll read it to you. It's in the book of Proverbs. It's not in our notes this morning. But in Proverbs 8, 6, the Passion Translation, and listen to this as it says it this way. It says, the meaning of my words will release within you revelation for you to reign in life. Isn't that incredible? God makes a promise. He says, the meaning of my words will release within you revelation for you to reign in life. And I'm here to declare to you this morning that when you understand the spirit of revelation, that Jesus does it for a purpose because he wants you to reign in this life. He doesn't want you to be a victim. He wants you to be a victor. He wants you to be an overcomer. Jesus wants you to be his champion, to be his voice, to be the one that he can entrust, if you would, the secrets of the kingdom to you. He wants to reveal things to you. If you read throughout the Bible, there's all types of revelations that God brings to people. There's one story I was just thinking about where there's two brothers, Esau and his brother Jacob, and they were going through all this big family fight, and I won't go through the whole story, but anyway, the younger brother Jacob winds up leaving, and he goes into a, he's just on a, on a journey to get back, to, to get away from his older brother, and to find out what God's purpose is in his life, and he lays down on a rock out in the middle of a field, and all of a sudden he has a dream, he has a revelation. He sees angels descending and ascending on the ladder, and he sees the, the ladder of God, and he realizes that God is in this place, and he made a promise to God. He said, God, if you'll bring me back to this place, then I will serve you and I will honor you. And so he set on his own, went through his journey, came back to that place. It was what they would call uh, the town of Bethel. And I believe it later on became like Bethlehem. Jesus was born there. The place with a portal where the God showed to his servant Jacob. When God reveals things to you, I can just tell you it's such an exciting encounter. When God begins to reveal to you his purposes for your life. His purposes for your spouse's life or for your children's lives or for the direction he has for you or the things that God has in store for you. All of a sudden, you just, there's just this, this, this joy. There's just this excitement that God and I are in a partnership together and we're walking through life together because he wants me to reign in this life. And there's always the choices that we have to make every day. And sometimes we make choices that cause us to go into slavery and bondage. And sometimes we can make right choices that cause us to rule and reign and to overcome the things that so easily beset us and thwart us. And every day we have these choices, and I'm here just to encourage you this morning and just to, to plead with you, if you will, if you let this pastor just, just, just encourage you, is to seek God for revelation knowledge. Seek God that he would unveil, he would reveal, he would just speak deep into the heart of your soul, that he would just begin to be, just reveal to you the things he has in store for you. The Bible says one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is he'll show you things to come. Now, obviously, you get my age, it's like, you know, things to come may look different than things to come if you're a lot younger. For some of you, things to come may be that God may have a spouse for you in your future. That's good things, hopefully. It could be in your future that maybe God has children for you to come to you. It could be in your future that maybe God has a career for you, set up for you, where you can just go and to generate and just be a blessing to you and a blessing to others as you find satisfaction in the fields that God's placed you in. It could be that spiritually speaking, and this is what I enjoy, is where God the Holy Spirit begins to release giftings and callings in people's lives, and they begin to mature and grow in those giftings and callings, and God just uses them in supernatural ways. You just see Jesus just do some amazing things. Got the latest update from our friend uh, evangelist Christopher Alam. He's over in this uh, Asian nation where he's preaching Jesus, where that 99% of the population is not Christian. He talked about the things that they're seeing. He says that the miracles of God were so prevalent and so strong in his crusade. They didn't have enough room around the altar. And those of us who've been with him on his crusades, he has huge soccer fields. I mean, we're not talking about just a little room like this. We're talking massive acres of land. He says, and so many people were getting healed, they couldn't even get them all up front. They couldn't even get close to the stage to get their testimonies. Then when the word spread, the deaf ears were open and blind eyes were open and the cripple began to walk and he just has, he has picture after picture after picture of all these people who are not Christ's followers receiving incredible revelation of who Jesus is. 
Well, thank God that a man like Christopher Lon chose to walk with Jesus, that he let Jesus reveal his son to him. And Jesus will do the same for you. He's no respecter of persons. So you can say, well, I can't preach as well as Pastor Mitch. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> we understand that. No, in fact, it's so, it just, it's so humorous to me because people hear me preach and they think, I can do that. I can even do better. I'm like, yes, 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 you can. But God will use anybody. And it's such a joy to be able just to announce to you as you follow Jesus, as you worship Jesus, as you give your life to Jesus, that all of a sudden he begins to reveal depths and new knowledge and new insights about who he is and what he's about and what he wants to do in your life and how he's chosen you and he's called you and just purposes and places and adventures you can be with him. And you just realize, man, man, it's so much fun to walk with Jesus and to know Jesus. So our first scriptures we have this morning is in Luke 2, 15 through 18. It says this, as the angel choir withdrew, into heaven, the sheep herders, not shepherds, I have to get this word right, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. Here's what's so cool about Jesus is that Jesus wants you and I to walk in revelation knowledge and so I want to just encourage you this morning is what has God been revealing to you in your journey with him the shepherds were out in the field just doing their business when the angelic choir appeared they had a sight or a vision or a revelation into the spirit realm saw the angelic choir they began to sing and praise and saying the promise that has been made for thousands of years that God would send himself in human flesh that would die and take my sin and your sin. Think about that. As it's been said, if you were the only person to be born after Jesus came to earth, he would still come and die for you. Just for you. What an incredible personal relationship God has with each one of us. And so when you think about the shepherds, they're just doing their business, and there was a revelation that came as they're watching the sheep. They see this glory, glorious magnification of who Jesus is, who the Father is, what he's done, how he's brought his son into the earth. They said, let's go and see if these things are true. And they found it to be true, and it says they went around telling everyone all the things that they had seen and heard. And I'm here to stir you up this morning to say, you know, there's things we should be seeing and hearing from the Father. I'll give you another, just another metaphor that's in the Bible. There's a whole book in the Bible, the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, which is an unveiling of who Jesus is. It's an unveiling of what he's going to do and what his purposes are on planet Earth. And it talks about in the book of Revelation just the incredible intensity of worship and worshiping God and honoring God and serving him. And we heard the challenge earlier in our praise and worship that, you know, it's the season that we can sing Christmas carols and we can celebrate that God's answer to thousands of years and prophecies that God had made that he, God, would come and bear my sin and your sin. But there's so much more once you receive the forgiveness of sins. There's so much more that God has for you. There's so many more things that God wants you to enjoy to reveal to you. Releasing from sin is just the beginning of that journey with Jesus. It's like all of a sudden you realize, man, God's got purposes for my life. Like George Washington Carver found out that, you know, you can trust God in the field of science. You can believe him. He may not show you the secrets of the universe, but he can sure show you the secrets of a little peanut. A lot of times we expect God to do these incredible things, and he does, but sometimes it's in the imperceptible movements of God that he positions us from one thing to the next to get us ready for the revelation of what he has so in the book of Revelation it talks about the throne of God it says in this throne of God it says there's a river that flows out of the throne and it's just flowing full of life full of knowledge full of health full of healing all kinds of things flowing out of this river and it's open 24-7, 365, the river of God. And anyone can come and, free, and freely drink and partake of the river of God. So when you're in situations where you need, quote, a word from God, 
I would encourage you to go to the river of God and let the river of God that's flowing inside of you called the Holy Spirit, let him teach you, let him instruct you, let him guide you, let him be the one to inspire you as you go through your journey in life. As the Proverbs said that you can rule and reign in this life. That you're no longer a victim, but a victor. Amen. This is good news. You mean to me, you mean to tell me, Pastor Mitch, that God doesn't want me just to be a slave to my circumstances? That's right. You mean God doesn't want me to be addicted to my all my addictive things? That's right. You know, we had a pastor one time, he shared with us that they were going through this thing about addiction, and one of his staff members just confessed that they were addicted to the Weather Channel. And, uh, you know, you can ad get addicted to anything, but I'm just telling you that God wants to set you free so that you can just enjoy life. Ruling and reigning in life. And I'm just telling you, but there's a fight. And so God brings revelation to you. Now, let me just tell you this, this second service, I just have a, a different sense about what God's doing than what I did first service. But for some of you, you need a revelation as to who God is and who the devil is. Because a lot of people blame God for stuff it's the devil's doing, and you need a revelation. Let me just go a step further with this. I think it's having Pastor Later sitting here on the front. She brings it out of me. There is, there is, I believe, demonic spirits assigned to harass and attack you. I believe there's demons sent straight from the pit of hell that want to make your life miserable. And no, it's not your spouse, so stop. <laughs> but I believe that there are demon spirits that seek to inflict torment on people. And I believe that when you start walking in revelation, that God begins to open your eyes and open your mind and begin to quicken to you things that God wants you to be aware of so that you can rule and reign in this life. There's little trigger points that will cause you like, for instance, maybe you're just struggling with, you know, anger. Maybe you've got unforgiveness. Maybe you've got bitterness. Maybe you've got all these just kind of negative emotions and just, you know, you're kind of going through life and triggers happen. And all of a sudden, just without any, really any reason, just stuff just starts to bombard your mind. Well, I think it's demonic spirits. I think they've been sent from the pit of hell to torment you. And that's why the revelation of God comes in. It's so strong because God will give you hope in the midst of your circumstances. God will give you the ability to overcome in spite of what circumstances you're going through. Let me tell you why a lot of people are doing drugs nowadays. This is why it's such an epidemic or pandemic in our culture. Because they've lost all hope. They believed a lie. And all I can tell you is as long as Jesus is alive, you have hope. No matter what your circumstances are, no matter what you're going through in life, no matter what you're facing, I am telling you by the word of the Lord, by the authority invested in me, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have hope because of Jesus. So having said that, let me tell you one of the greatest revelations you can ever get that Jesus brought, listen to me, was that God is a father. He's a good father. He's a perfect father. There's people say, well, you know, my father, he wasn't too good. I kind of, or I had a crummy stepdad, or I had this, or I had this. I can just tell you, your heavenly father is perfect. And when God gives you the revelation that God is not father, he's dad. He's papa. He's abba. He's the one that you can draw close to. And when that revelation goes off in your heart and mind, and you realize God is a family God. He's Father. I can trust Him. I can give my life to Him. I can serve Him. He has good intentions in my life, for my life. So listen to what Jesus said this in the book of Luke 10, 22. It says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. If you read the first part of this verse, it gets kind of hopeless because it says no one knows the Father, no one knows the Son. They just kind of know each other. But it says unless the Son chooses to reveal Him to you, the Father. Listen to what he says also in the book of John, John 1.18. No one has ever seen God but the unique one who is Himself God is near to the Father's heart, he has revealed God to us. 
So if you ever have a curiosity of what God the Father is like, look at what Jesus the Son did when he walked on the planet Earth, and you'll know what the Father God is like. And when you get that revelation that God's a Father and he's a good Father with good plans, good intentions for you, you can trust him with your life. You can choose to walk with him. You can choose to serve him. You can choose to obey him. And I said this first service, and I just I don't feel it as strong as service, but I'm going to bring it up again. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 6, verses 17 and 18, it tells you and I conditions that God has on him being a father. And it says that we can't live a life of compromise. That when you go for God, you've got to be all in, every part of your life surrendered to him. And I found out in our culture that what we want is we want Jesus and we want to bring our stuff with us. For instance, like I want to serve Jesus, but I also want to bring my boyfriend or my girlfriend with me and they're not pleasing God, but it's okay because I'm going to try to convert them. That's not what the word says. I know that we can always find people that look for missionary dating and look for success stories, but I can tell you in decades of ministry, I've seen a lot more shipwrecks then I have successes. A lot more people that had a call of God in their life, had the authority of God, had the vision from God, had callings of God, giftings of God on their life, and because of compromise, they simply derailed the gifts and callings of God that God wanted to release through their life. I can tell you there's a lot of times you have people that come in and they want to serve Jesus, and they want to give their life to Jesus, and then they get under family pressure. Maybe it's like a college student or something, and their parents don't want them to do certain things, and so they wind up not going that direction. So it's just too costly. Or I'll, go, I'll get held on even further. I've seen a lot of people go into ministry. They're all excited, and they find out that their paycheck is not near as much as what their peers are making who graduated from college, and they get all discouraged. Hey, I've been there, done that. All I can tell you is you got to walk with God. you got to trust God. Jesus has to mean more to you than your paycheck. And everybody says, yes, amen, until you go into the grocery store and you can't buy stuff because you don't have any money. Everybody says, yes, and amen, until you go walking into Christmas and you're trying to buy gifts for other people and you don't have any resources to buy them gifts. That happened to Reeb and I one Christmas, man. We'd been in campus ministry. We'd been our first six months of campus ministry. Had no money. We were supposed to go back to her hometown and be with her family. And then we had absolutely no money for Christmas gifts. You know, when you're making $300 a month, it's hard to have anything left over for Christmas gifts. And we had to find a way to get gas in the car to get from <clears throat> Bloomington, Indiana, back to Paducah, Kentucky. And we had a friend that was getting married in another church in another town, and he asked me to do the wedding. I said, sure. So we stopped in, did the wedding, took care of them. And on our journey, they, we, they gave us a Christmas card. We opened up. It was $300. We were so excited. I mean, we're jumping all around that car. We're able to get Christmas gifts through that gift. All I can tell you is that you have to obey God. There's been other times I just had to go without. Why? Because it's just part of the cost of following Jesus. Everybody always wants the success stories. Everybody always wants the end story. But sometimes you've got to take the intermediate steps to get there. I can just tell you, I, just, I say this story all the time because these are things that just were real, real life. Before we had this massive building and all this stuff we're building here, we were meeting in the Park Forest Middle School Auditorium. And we had, it was a seating of like 600. Finally, we realized you could bring walls across it to cut the seating down to 250 seats. And there'd be 50 or 60 of us coming together. And I'd be just preaching the kingdom of God. And God had great purposes. And God had great plans. And if people could have said, you're delusional, I probably would have agreed with them. You're right. There is no way on God's green earth we will ever achieve what God wants to do. And all I can tell you is be faithful to what God has called you to do. He will bring it to pass in his time because he's a good father and he has good plans for your life. Just because you don't get it this month doesn't mean it's not, it's not going to come to pass. Just because you don't get it this year doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Let me go through another thing that God wants us to get rid of if you want God to be your father. You cannot bring bitterness and unforgiveness with you into a relationship with God. You have to let it go. 
When you're walking with the Lord and God begins to clean you up and begins to just get down inside of your life and begin to bring purification, God says you have got to let go of these feelings that trigger unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, rage. It's not part of who I am. And if you are going to follow me, you cannot act in this way. Some of you have never had issues with any of that stuff. But some of us have had major issues with that stuff. And that's where you have to lean into God. That's where you need a revelation saying, God, I just need you to come reveal to me, help me overcome this stuff in my life. And you just begin to walk with God and begin to believe God and trust God and lean into what he has for you. And saying, God, I know I shouldn't get angry. God, I shouldn't get all this, this rage built up or this unforgiveness or this bitterness. God, change my heart. Let me tell you another thing that God does. This is what's really interesting. Is a lot of times we have what the Bible would call hard hearts. People that just become entrenched in certain attitudes and feelings and the ways they, they emote about things. For instance, you could talk about politics. And all of a sudden, hard hearts just come out, man. It just becomes, just, it becomes all out war. And all I can tell you is if your hope is in the government of the United States, I pity you. And that doesn't mean I don't pray for our government and I don't pray for our, the things going on because our country, we need help. We need more, more churches full of people like you guys to saturate our culture. But I'm telling you, our hope cannot rest in our government. We have a different kingdom, a different government, a different way of doing things. All I can tell you is that when you're walking with Jesus and you're trying to please him and serve him, it is amazing how he begins to reveal hard hearts in different areas of your life. And God has to come through and just, if you would, surgically remove the hardness of heart out of your life. Because his job, if you would, of the Holy Spirit is to tenderize your heart. This is really good. This is not even a note, so I'm just going to stay with it. And some of you say, you're making me uncomfortable. Well, curl your toes up and put them under your seat. It's okay. But I'm telling you, God the Holy Spirit wants to tenderize your heart. Do you know what? I, I will say this to you. You know, I've watched enough Hallmark movies this Christmas season to please any woman in this room, I think. <laughs> and it's gotten so bad that I finally had to go get I'd do another room and watch some sports because I was, I was, Hallmark was going in and out. The themes were good. But even, I'm just saying that not to, not to belittle those who watch Hallmark movies, but you know, some of those scenes, I mean, sometimes, man, I just, I'm telling you right now, I start to tear up at some of those movies. It's like I can't watch them anymore because I just can't take it. And then, so then I thought I would get a safe place. I thought I'll watch the Shark Tank. Those guys are brutal. People have new ideas, and they just get in there, and I'm not giving you any money. I don't want to pretend you. You've overestimated, overvalued your company, all this stuff. So they had this one show where these three kids came in. The girl was 24. Her brother was 21. They had a little sister, 15. And their dad was a New York City fireman who had died, who had served in 9-11 because of all the fumes and toxic gases he had breathed in, and he just passed away. And he would invented this cutting board with all this special stuff on it. I mean, the sharks, I mean, the one guy, he's just, he's, he's just tearing up, tearing up. And finally, they ask the kids, would you please just leave the room? And so the kids go out, and they're going, oh, well, I hope we get a, hope we get a shark to invest in us and be a part of us. And, they're, and so all the guys are there, are talking. They said, look, we're going to buy this company. We're going to buy these kids. We'll give all the money to help support, you know, people who've been injured or wounded out of the 9-11 disaster, you know, policemen, firemen, so on. We're going to invest in these kids. And I'm telling you, man, I am bawling my eyes out. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just bawling and bawling. I can't believe it. It's like, what is wrong with me? I'm just stupid. I just felt like a jerk just sitting there by myself, just tears just streaming down my face. But I was so touched by these kids because their mom had died several years earlier, and now they were parentless, but they were fulfilling the dream. Listen, they were fulfilling the dream their father had that he would one day get to get on the shark tank and, and show them this new design cutting board that he had. Well, your Heavenly Father has a dream for you. He has something He wants you to fulfill. He has a joy and a hope and a desire for you that you'll walk with Him and serve Him and know Him. He has just this, this expectation for you. And so the Bible tells you and I that once you have the revelation that God's your Father, then God wants to, you and I to reveal Jesus to the world. 
This is what it says in the book of Acts. Acts 2.17. It says, uh, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will speak what God has revealed. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And by the way, I'm still seeing visions. It says, in those days, I will pour out my spirit on all my servants, on both men and women. How many of you like that? Men and women. God is equal opportunity employer. If you're a woman, you have as much value in the kingdom of God as men do. And all the men said, that was really weak. (laughs) And all the men said, amen. One more time. And all the men said, amen. No more of this just kind of ego stuff. It's just it's all kingdom. We've got to be kingdom centered. All right. So it says they will speak what God has revealed. And this is the joy about living in this era that we live in, this era of the Holy Spirit, that God the Holy Spirit is pouring out revelation knowledge. God the Holy Spirit is showing visions and dreams. And here's the cool thing I shared earlier about George Washington Carver. But in your field or in your workplace or wherever you are, you can let God the Holy Spirit come into your life, speak to you in such a way that you can walk with him and he will give you revelation knowledge that you need so that you can prosper, you can thrive, you can advance in the field that he's put you in. Does everybody follow that? To me, it's so exciting when you realize, that, man, I can just serve the Lord in this position he's placed me in. If he needs to move you to another place, you're just willing to go. Lord, I'm just willing to follow you. Lord, I'm just willing to serve you. Like Reby and I will tell you, our journey of faith. She reminded me of this the other day. We, we moved up here. I moved up here before she did. I was living in a townhouse with some other Christian guys. And she had to pack the car by herself, six, seven months pregnant, and drive up here. And that's how we started our adventures in State College. And I used to say this, but I'll just share this with you. I tell you, our first five years, we came in on Highway 322. We'd come over Sky Top Mountain as we would descend down into the valley. We both would begin to cry tears of desperation. There was just this incredible heaviness that was in this, in this we felt in this valley. It just felt like there was just an oppression and just a, a heavy weight and just a, like there wasn't any joy. Talking about telling like, feeling like two fish out of water, we felt that way. But we knew God had called us here because God had a mighty work he wanted to do in our community. My frustration was I didn't think it would take 35 years to see it come to pass. I thought it would be done a lot quicker than this, and it's okay. you just got to follow God and obey Him. And I'm just here just to encourage you that your circumstances right now may seem a little bitter. Your circumstances may seem a little trying. Your vision or your dream that God's put in your heart hasn't been fulfilled yet, and I'm here to tell you, hang on, hold on, have high hopes in Him. He will bring it to pass. He's a good father with a good, and he's got good intentions for your life. You can trust him. So as you go through this thing about the last days, God says he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, servants, sons, and daughters, men and women. It says that God is revealing and re- un- unveiling his purposes in planet Earth. So you and I have to be about the Father's business. We have to be about the kingdom business. We, we honor him by putting him first. We honor him by the way we conduct ourselves, the way we speak to one another, the way we speak to our coworkers, the way we speak to our boss, the way that we go about handling our affairs. We walk in a way of integrity. We walk in a way of honor. Why is that? Because we're about the king's business. And when you have that attitude, all of a sudden you realize, man, life gets exciting because I just never know every day what Jesus is going to do. You never know where he's going to send you, what projects he's going to put you on. You don't know what assignments he's going to give you. And you say, God, just thank you for the privilege of walking with you. Listen to this verse as it goes on in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. God's word translation says it this way. God has revealed those things to us by his spirit. What are we talking about? The things that says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Neither is it into the heart of man all the wonderful things God has prepared for those who love him. So how do you get to know the things God's prepared for you? Well, that's what it says. It says, God's revealed these things to us by his spirit. The spirit searches everything, especially the deep things of God. Now, we didn't receive the spirit that belongs to the world. Instead, we received the spirit who comes from God so that we could know the things which God has freely given us. And that's such an encouraging word that you and I can know. We can know the things that God has freely given given to us this is christmas god has gifts to give and god's letting you know that he's freely freely 
freely dispensing gifts to all of us. That God has some incredible intentions for your life. That God has such a joy in unveiling and revealing through His Son Jesus to you and I His gifts to the world. Aren't we so glad that maybe for some of you that God's given you gifts of healing? When you pray for people, there's all sudden miracles that take place. Aren't you glad there's people that God's given gifts of discernment to that you get around them and all of a sudden they begin to sense things and pick things up and they're praying with you and standing with you and speaking the word of God into your situation? Aren't you glad for people who have mercy gifts? That when you've kind of fallen and scraped your knee, that the mercy gifts come along and just kind of help bandage you and clean you up and get you back to feeling good about yourself. Aren't you glad for those gifts? Aren't you glad for leadership gifts where people say, this is the way, walk in it, walk in this direction, this is what God has for us. We're thank God for that. Aren't you glad for gifts of giving? Man, just look at what we're doing in our care tree and all the packages you guys are bringing. I mean, it's unbelievable. I think in Pastor Dina's office, we're storing all the gifts, and we can't even walk in the office anymore because there's just packages everywhere. You guys just love to give and love to share and love to contribute and love to be a part. Why is that? Because Jesus gave to us. Jesus poured out on you and I. So here's what I'd like to do this morning. If you guys will stand with me, we're going to be dismissed in just a moment. And then you can go take your tour and see all the cool stuff in the other building. Those who are watching online, you got to come, come to this building, see what God's doing. But the Lord's put it in my heart for, to pray for a couple of things. And the first prayer I want to have is once everybody gets moved around, I'll let the music team get in their positions. And uh, once everybody gets still, then I want to pray because this is an encounter that is so serious to me and so sincere that I just need everybody just to be still for just a moment so that we can just receive what God has for us. So I want to pray for those who've never met Jesus. Like I said, the word we had before first service was there may be people coming into our services who've never been in church before, have not been in church very frequently, and this is a, their moment of looking for reconciliation. So if you guys would just bow your heads with me and just ask the Lord and just, and just take a moment and just say, this is between you and God, and let him reveal himself to you. Maybe it's his love he has to reveal to you. Maybe it's the Father heart of God that gets revealed to you. Or maybe it's the realization that Jesus died on the cross just for you. Or maybe you're in a place this morning that you just realize that, you know, Pastor Mitch, I've tried to organize religion. I've tried all the, the rituals and the creeds, and it just didn't work for me. And I'm, I'm here just to plead with you this morning that it's not about that stuff, not that that's bad, but it's just to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And what we've discovered is that it starts with just a heart cry to him. And maybe you can express to him your heart crying words like this and just follow me as I pray with you this morning saying, Lord Jesus, I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I ask for you to reveal to me the Father nature of God. I want to be your son or your daughter. And when you pray that, all of a sudden God just begins to show up and God begins to do incredible things in your life. And you get into things that before that you didn't notice, things before that weren't revealed to you. All of a sudden as you go through life, you realize the hand of God did this and the hand of God did that and the hand of God did this. And he set up these circumstances and he did these other things. And all of a sudden you realize, God, you are so good to us. God, you are so amazing and so wonderful to us. I just thank you, God, for this moment. Of revelation. Thank you, God, that your spirit's able to come and minister to us and to draw us into the family of God. That I'm called by your name, that I've been adopted by you, that I've been chosen by you. And the second prayer I want to pray for us is what we found. I didn't even read the scriptures, but it's found in Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. And we're going to pray this for ourselves in just a moment, but this is for every believer in this room. I want to pray this over you, but I want to read the scriptures first. It says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The Apostle Paul was praying this for the church at Ephesus. In his opening prayer, he's praying, he says, God, I pray that this church, this congregation, would receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That, God, they would know what is your hope, your hope, God, for their lives. That, God, you, they would know what their inheritance is they have in you. And, God, they'd also understand the great power you've released toward them as believers. 
And so I'd like for you, if you would, this morning, and you just would like to have a greater revelation, more revelation, more understanding, more insights into the things of God and the workings of God and the nature of God, and, and just have that communion with God, just to go deeper in Him, just raise your hands and just pray with me. We're going to ask God that He would just send to us that spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we can know the hope of our calling, that we can know our inheritance in Him, that we can know the great power He's released towards us as His sons and daughters. Father, we're standing before You this morning and we're declaring that we thank You, God, that You've given us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of You. Father, we thank You this morning that we can declare that we can know what is the hope to which You've called us. That, God, that we can know the great inheritance you've invested in us, your children, your family. And that, God, that we can understand the great power you've released towards us as your sons and daughters. Father, this morning we stand before you. We thank you that we live in a culture that this time of year has turned towards you and the attention, if you would, the spiritual antennas have gone up. Father, I pray that you help us as a congregation. God, help us move in a spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, help us move in a way that draws people to you, Jesus. Lord, help us as a community of faith as we go about our daily activities that, God, you would just drop words of knowledge, words of wisdom, words of hope, words of healing into our lives. Father, I pray that you would just activate within us, Lord God, just that spirit that you've given us all your sons and daughters as you've poured out in these last days. That, God, that we'd be able to bring the revelation of the true Jesus, the revelation of the biblical Jesus, the revelation of the Jesus that came to earth and fulfilled the promises and that he gave his life just for you and I to take our sins. God, I pray that you let us go deeper in you, Father, as a congregation. Father, I pray there would just be this, this encouragement and this joy of this season. Lord, I pray that you would teach us how to reign in this life. That God would not be satisfied with status quo. That God, there just be this overcoming spirit within us. That God, we would just continue to this journey of faith and trust in you. And Father, we give you thanks in Jesus' name.